Coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. When you have unanswered questions about certain things that happen, don't turn to God and blame him for it. You can't blame the one who is the master at restoration. You can't blame the one who is the master of comfort and redirection. You can't blame the one who can give you peace even in the midst of the storm. You can't blame him for the storm and then turn to him for peace. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Fresh is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and to give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today we'll be continuing our message series, Discernment for the Last Days. And this is part 25 of that message series, Discernment for the Last Days. And these are the last days. We've been taking this message series in three sections. The first section was recognizing a balanced gospel. And we took that from part 1 to 10. Then from part 11 to 22, we looked at recognizing a false minister. We started from part 23 to look at recognizing a good shepherd. And today we're looking at part 25. We said that Jesus is the good, great shepherd. That's what we've said so far. He said that about himself in John chapter 10, verse 11. He called himself the good shepherd. In Jeremiah 23, 4, we see that he promised to set up shepherds over his people that will feed his people and nurture them. Well, if Jesus has a certain kind of nature, it stands to reason that the kind of shepherds or under shepherds, pastors, he would choose to take care of his people and feed them will be people who will display this nature. And as born again Christians, that's the nature that we have. We no longer have the sin nature. So Jesus' nature is what we expect to see in a good shepherd or in a good under shepherd or in a good pastor. And that will help us recognize who a good shepherd is. Well, if we look at the nature of God and we know that Jesus called himself equal to God, then we can figure out that the nature of God is the nature of Jesus. So we began to answer a call to know God. We looked at Apostle Paul who said about himself that he was ready to count all things as lost, to get the excellence of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to get the excellence of that knowledge. And we want the excellence of the knowledge. We don't want mediocre knowledge. We found out that we should pursue and hunger after the knowledge of God, showing that God is important and of value to us. Well, we began to look at the last episode before I ran out of time, that there is certain evidence that is seen when you know God. And there's so much you can write a book on this. But just looking at two of them, two things you can, that should be seen in your life if you know God and if you're walking along that journey of knowing God experientially. We said, um, when you know him, you will do his commandments. When you know God, you will do his commandments. First John 2, verse 3 to 6. Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, like so many believers today, 
I know God, but I don't keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself to walk just as he walked. John 8, 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Child of God, you can't separate God from his word. He is the word and the word is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So you cannot separate God from his word. So God or the word of God is not just a phenomenon you find in, you know, sophisticated churches or in that kind of old fashioned church. I go to a word church. I go to a church where we preach the word. What is really a word church? I say this from time to time on Fresh Tea. A word church is not a funky church. A word church is not a church where, um, you know, the women wear trousers and they make up. So that means we're a word church. You old fashioned people, you don't know that the word allows you to do that. No, 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 no. It's, more, it's much, much more than that. If we say you don't separate God from his word and you don't separate, you know, that God and his word are the same, then a word church is a church where God is. A word church is a church where the nature of God is displayed. And he says, if you keep my word, that is evidence that you know me. So the word of God should be found in living churches. The word of God is not a hallmark of a sophisticated, funky church. The word of God is found in a living church. That's the beginning of what you're looking for. A church where God is, where the nature, the, this nature we're going to discover the nature of God is there. Some of these churches that are run by false ministers, on the outside, they look like word churches. They do the things word churches do. They dress the way people who supposedly are liberated in word churches dress. But that doesn't make them a word church. God and his word are one. If it's a word church, then it's a God church. Glory be to God. I'll say it again. If it's a word church, then it's a God church. The fact that church is there doesn't mean it's a church. So if it's a word church, it is a God church. And you know a word church by a place where the word of God is kept, is nurtured. He says, abide in my word, abide in my word. So when you know God, you won't think twice about keeping his word. It really, really baffles me when I see believers who negotiate the principles of God. They never want to negotiate the promises. You know, they want every good thing, grab, grab, grab. I want what God says about me. But you know, their principles also, their, their priorities with God. And you see believers who negotiate the principles and the priorities of God, but they want to grab all the promises. They, they want the blessings of Abraham, but they don't want the responsibilities of Abraham. No child of God, that's not the way it goes. If you keep his word, you keep the totality of his word. You can't have selective amnesia where the word is concerned. You can't decide that you understand this, you don't understand this. Or you got this when pastor said this. When pastor said this, you didn't get that. No, no, it's the totality of the word, when you embrace the totality of the word, you embrace the totality of God. I'll say it again. Remember I said last episode that God doesn't hold back any part of his nature from us. He's a God of integrity, whole number, integer. He shows you everything. There's no more mystery. The mysterion is gone. There's no mystery again for the children of God. God is open and transparent before us. And he expects the same thing um, for us before him. Yes, you may know in part, like the Bible says, but God himself reveals to you all you need to know about him. He's not hiding any part of himself because there's something bad. That's what I mean. Something bad he's hiding from you. No, no, no. As you walk with him, you begin to see more and more of who he is, who he has always been, not because he hid it from you. So when you embrace the totality of God's word with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, you embrace the totality of God. You can be selective about what you take from God. So when you know God, you won't think twice about keeping his word. When you keep his word, you will abide in his word. To abide in his word is to take habitation, to dwell, to live permanently. You don't visit the word sporadically. You don't go to the word spasmodically. You don't go to the word on schizophrenically. You don't go to the word on Sundays only. And then you're somebody else from, Saturday, from, from Monday to Saturday. No, no, no. When you keep his word, you abide in his word. You are, the word is in you. And guess what happens? We're talking, about, we're talking about evidence of knowing God. You will keep his word. You will keep his commandments. Well, when you embrace his word and you abide in his word, it says you will be my disciples 
indeed. You will be my disciples indeed. We read in the earlier portion of scripture, 1 John 2, 6, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Who is a disciple? A disciple is somebody who walks after the footsteps of the person he's following or his master. You walk just as he walked. That's the same thing we saw in John 8. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And that's when you begin to see the nature of God on display. If you want to discover a good shepherd, a good under shepherd, you certainly want somebody who is abiding in the word of God and developing and cultivating experientially that nature of Jesus Christ, which is the nature of God. Glory be to God. Second thing, evidence about where you know God, when you know him, you will display his excellence. When you know God, you will display his excellence. Let's go to the Old Testament and see this. Daniel eleven thirty-two. 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. This is one of Pastor Charles' favorite verses. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. We're talking about evidence of knowing God. When you know him, you will display his excellence. When you know him, you will display his excellence. Let me show you that again. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, when you look at that um, in the King James Version, in the rendering, you will see that the word exploit is italicized. And when something is italicized, it generally suggests that the translators put that word in there. It's not in the original script. They put it in there to help you know, explain what they understood from the scriptures. Many times, the, what they put in italics doesn't really do much damage to the meaning. But there are some cases in scripture where those italicized words completely give an opposite um, picture of what the scripture was actually trying to say. That's why you need to study to show, your, show yourself approved. You need to bend every effort to study the word of God and discover things for yourself. So that word exploit is italicized. It's not originally there. So if you read it again, it says the second part of that verse, for the people, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do. Hmm. They shall be strong and do. Do what? That's why the translators put exploits. But what does it mean to do? To do is a Hebrew word that means to do or make, to accomplish, to invent, to fashion something. That's awesome. You know, I wanted to put this point as when you know God, you will display his creative excellence. And that's really what happens when you know him. When you know him and you begin to know all about God is creativity. God is creator. God has all the good ideas for any business, any project, anything you want to do. The best ideas are found in God. Some of us spend our time researching all kinds of people. It's awesome to research people who are repositories of knowledge. It's good to you know, research all these awesome things. But you know, you'd be amazed how many divinely inspired good ideas will come to you as a businessman, will come to you even as a housewife who's running her home. Divinely inspired good ideas are found in God. And you'll be able to do to fashion things, to create things, to have breakthroughs in different things that are, seem to be stuck because you know your God. You've gotten to the point where you are drinking from that very nature of God, where the very nature of God is bubbling out of you. There is no failure in God. There is no boredom in God. There is no stagnation in God. Everything flows with him. Glory be to God. So when you know your God, you're actually able to do, to invent. Some of the best inventions come from people who have a relationship with God in some way or the other. Glory be to God. So it also means to do the covenant. When you know your God, you actually do the covenant. The covenant is not just meant to be read or just understood. It's also meant to be done or acted out. You know how to act out your covenant of wealth. You know how to act out your covenant of healing and health. You know how to act out your covenant of, you know, all the things that God has promised you. You're able to do the covenant. You're able to express not just the promises of the word, but the priorities, the principles of the word of God as well. They that know their God shall be strong and shall do, shall invent, shall do the covenant. And all this is possible because you are strengthened by the intimacy. Remember we said that's what to know means. That's the way a man knows his wife. The intimacy you have in your relationship with God. Child of God, you should be distinct. 
Child of God, you should stand out in your office, wherever you are. There should be something different about you. And what is different about you can't just be the positional relationship you have with God. It actually comes from the experiential relationship you have with him. Because the more you know him, I, I'll, I'll say this, when you know God, it's difficult for you to be deceived by false ministers. And it's easy for you to be led by God to a good shepherd. What we need in these last days is to locate the good shepherd that Jesus himself personally has set over us. And when you know your God, recognizing those good shepherds, locating them, being able to find them becomes easy for you. And the evidence for this, like I said, is you will keep his word and you'll be able to do exploits or do inventions and do great things for him. You will stand out wherever you are. Well, that's, a, that's it about calling the call to know God. Let's look at the next section now, which is revelations of who God is. And we're going to learn some very interesting things about God here. And, you know, it might surprise us that a lot of things we knew about God were just lies. We'll discover who God is as a person. So the first thing we'll look at, which is probably all we'll look at today, is that God is good and he gives only good. Just simple. God is good. Ah, I know God is good. Do you really know God is good? We'll find out. God is good and he gives only good. Remember again our focus. If God is good and he gives only good, then Jesus, the good shepherd, is good and gives only good. Then we find out the focus at the end of this for the under shepherd. Let's read some scriptures. Psalm 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all who call upon, to all, all those who call upon you. Lord, you are good. Psalm 118, verse one, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Psalm 145 verse 9, the Lord is good to all. I love that. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Luke 18 verse 18. Now a certain ruler asked him saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. That's already four witnesses. I can give you two more. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. I love this verse of scripture. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold. And James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. That word good from the Hebrew is the word tob, T-O-W-B or T-O-B, tob. And from the Strong's, it means beautiful, best, bountiful, I'm just speaking some of them, cheerful, at ease, favor, uh, joyful, pleasant, pleasure, precious, prosperity, lovely words that mean good. And good from the Greek is the word agathos, and it means good, benefit, good things, to be well. Amen. So that's who God is. God is good. I said God is good. Somebody's answering where they are all the time. Christians answer that way. God is good. Glory be to God. That's who God is. He's a good God. You serve a good God. Your father is a good God. Glory be to God. He's good. Now, I didn't say God does good. There are two different things. I said God is good. That means God cannot be anything else but good. Remember, we're studying the nature of God. We we'll begin to get revelations of his nature. Many of us look at God and we think God does good, devil does bad. God, no, I didn't say God does good. I said God is good. That means God cannot be bad. Under any circumstances, God cannot be bad. God cannot be evil. He says he's not a man that he should lie. He cannot, he's not a man. He cannot. I want to repeat this so it sinks in and begins to get rid of some of those religious spirits. Because sometimes when we don't have answers to certain things, we just pack it all on God and blame it on God. God is good, child of God. If you're watching with somebody, turn to them and say, God is good. Not just that God does good, but he is good. That is his nature. Glory be to God. God is good. So he's not just good. He's Now listen to this. He's sovereignly good. That's one area where we mix up the nature of God in this, in this area of his being good. He's sovereignly good. When you're sovereign, you're in charge, you do whatever you want, you don't need anybody's help, you don't need anybody's permission, you can do whatever you want. Well, if you're a sovereign, will you display the nature of a stranger? If you're sovereign, will you display the nature of somebody who is not like you? If you're sovereign, you will use your sovereignty to display your nature. Well, we've said God is good. 
not he does good, he is good. If God is good and he's sovereign, then we can conclude that God uses his sovereignty only for good. Glory be to God, only for good. So you don't have a situation where somebody, something happens and someone says, oh, that was the sovereignty of God. You know, God, God just did what he wanted. A plane falls out of the sky. Well, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Let the Lord do what he wants. Let the Lord's will be done. No, no, no. Don't be quoting Job who had things he didn't understand. Don't, 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 don't do that. God is good. God is sovereign. God uses his sovereignty only for good. When a plane falls out of the sky, it's not God's fault. When a baby dies young, it's not God's fault. When an earthquake happens, it's not God's fault. That God does not need evil to teach you a lesson. God cannot be evil. His nature is good. In no situations and no circumstances does God do evil. If you don't consider it evil for an earthquake to destroy half of a country, then I don't know what you consider it evil. When someone dies before their time, it is not the will of God. Don't say that. You might be rocking some people's... No, I, I, I have lost people close to me who died before they ought to have died. But I never blamed God for one day. God had nothing to do with it. God is good. We must know the integrity of the nature of God. We must know the goodness of God. Child of God, let this be a revelation to you. When you have unanswered questions about certain things that happen, don't turn to God and blame him for it. You can't blame the one who is the master at restoration. You can't blame the one who is the master of comfort and redirection. You can't blame the one who can give you peace even in the midst of the storm. You can't blame him for the storm and then turn to him for peace. He is good. He's kind. He's pleasant. He's gracious. He's favorable. He's a good God all the time. When we chant all the time in response to God is good, let's begin to believe what we're saying. Glory be to God. Not just is he good and sovereignly good. He only gives good and perfect gifts. God does not give gifts that are not good and perfect. If something is not good and perfect, somebody else corrupted it. But God is the God that can restore and set it back, especially if it concerns your body. He's the manufacturer. He knows how it's supposed to work. You really should look to him to fix it. But he gives good and perfect gifts. That is who James tells us God is. He gives good and perfect gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. Light denotes revelation. Good things are found with the light. Father of light, in whom there is no variation, neither shadow of turning. So God is not good today and bad tomorrow. That's variation. He doesn't go this way today and go. God is in one direction. And that direction is to keep expressing the blessing he's put upon you in your life as a child of God. God is good. He's sovereignly good. He uses his sovereignty for good. He gives good and perfect gifts. And his message is good. The message is the good news. That's one way you find a good shepherd, somebody who teaches the good news. The good news is not, oh, you're going to hell. And hell is real, and people are going to hell if they don't know Jesus. But the good news is Jesus loves you, and he died to save you. And you can come to know this good God, and he becomes your father, and you begin a journey of knowing him. Child of God, God is good. The good shepherd is good, and he will bring pastors over us who are good, just like God is good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for beginning to show us who you are. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you 
just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.